we got episode three of only murders in the building where we relive the last day of bunny folger we get insight to who she really was as a person let's go over all the clues as we decode only murders in the building we start with the trio recreating bunny's last day and what would be her last day as board president we find that bunny was given the job as board president from her mother and that she planned to step down we also find out from the shot that was in the trailer that this pamphlet that said Boca Raton is a place that Bunny was thinking of going after retiring from her position. Later, the trio have a little party in the Arcornia courtyard with some fans. They're retelling the story of confronting Jan and saving the day. I find it interesting because the retelling of events is not at all how it went down. It's a much grander version of what really happened. And it's funny because in courtrooms, the same thing actually happens a lot. Eyewitness testimony is highly unreliable and often inconsistent, but in this case, it tells a great story. Bunny then approaches and tells the group that congregations of over 12 people must be approved by the board and that the superfans are not allowed to sell merchandise. Some of the items that they're selling are actual merchandise you can buy from the Only Murders Hulu shop. But why buy it when you can win it? I've decided to give away up to $50 of Only Murders merch on the channel. Stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'll tell you how to enter to win. We see the incoming board president meeting with Bunny, where she's giving her some last minute pointers. I will add that we finally got a mention of Jose Torres, the building superintendent. This was to replace a light bulb in the fountain. We get Uma and Bunny walking down the street as Bunny talks about maybe becoming a snowbird. Bunny gets a call from someone asking about the painting and she seems pretty frustrated about it. Bunny goes to the pickle diner and we hear from the waiter that Bunny was at the diner the previous day with someone that she does not consider a friend. She runs into Oliver and his son Will. Bunny gives the waiter Ivan what looks to be a very sizable tip. We saw the shot in the trailer and I theorized that it was in fact Bunny handing someone some money inside of a restaurant. I thought this was a legal deal, but it was just her being nice to someone that's always nice to her. We then see Bunny on the elevator with Charles and Mabel when the elevator goes down. Bunny has an elevator key and does some quick work and gets the elevator back in motion. We keep seeing her keys and it's possible that the killer might have took them in order to get into Mabel's room. Unknown to Bunny, the board meeting is actually a party for her retirement. And during the meeting, Bunny changes her mind about stepping down. This results in an argument between Bunny and Nina. This moment made me more endearing to Bunny and dislike the pyro hungry Nina, even more who already seemed a little uh, snooty. Nina appears to have pulled some kind of long con, getting Bunny to trust her in order to take her place as the board president. The trio then look over the murder board, adding in all the new clues they have collected so far, making Nina the prime suspect. Later, Bunny hears the trio parting and goes to thank them and gives them a bottle of champagne. They give her an Only Murders hoodie, and this explains why she was wearing it when she was stabbed. That video I posted last night about why Bunny was wearing the Only Murders hoodie, don't watch it. Just, just don't. It's irrelevant now. I will say, Bunny looks pretty cute in a hoodie, and I could totally see her at Woodstock. The trio closes the door on her, not realizing that she wanted to come in and celebrate with them. That leads to Bunny crying outside of their door, and this was an interesting turn of events and really showed that Bunny was just a person, just like anyone else, and she could be fun if you let her. The podcasters talk to her so close to her death, and the idea that they could have saved her life, even if only for a few hours, if they were just a little more nice. In an interesting bit, when the trio looks outside of the door, someone slams their door shut. Now, I thought this was Bunny at first, but then Bunny lives next door to Mabel, not across from her. This person lives a few doors down and across. I found it strange because it was just seconds after we no longer hear Bunny wailing outside. Though we don't know the name of this person, I believe it is the same person we saw in Season 1, Episode 1, when Mabel and Charles walk down the hall to Mabel's room just before they sneak into Bunny's place. It could also be this person standing by themselves when the trio gets arrested. I don't know if it is, or even if it is, if it means anything. I just thought it was interesting, wanted to share it with you. It's something we might want to keep an eye on. 
we then get our first shot of the killer. The story is definitely working different than last season. We did not get any candid shots of the killer, but I brought up these shoes in a previous video. It was, I believe it was a trailer breakdown and I thought they were pretty small and looks as if they might have had a slight heel. I assume that they belong to a woman. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. The killer knocks on Bunny's door as the killer is standing there. She says, what the fuck do you want? And this tells us that she indeed knew the killer, but we're not sure how familiar she is with this person. We then see the killer grab Bunny's shoulder wearing oversized gloves. These are kind of gloves that I think a butcher or someone like that would wear. They're not cold weather gloves. You see a lot of people wearing gloves in the show because it's winter. So I may be going on a stretch, but I don't think these gloves are the kind that any average person would wear or even happen to have in their home. This leads me to think that they are some type of work gloves and that the boots and pants that we see are a part of a uniform. Then we get some silhouettes of Bunny and the killer, and it's hard to tell, but it looks like they might be wearing glasses or a beanie or a baklava, something like that that hides their identity. So if we could figure out a reason why someone would be wearing something like this and Bunny would not be weirded out by that itself, that might be a pretty interesting uh, note, but they're not necessarily glasses. They could be shades or some kind of goggles. It then cuts to Mabel entering her room encountering bunny and that's where the episode ends this was a very great episode and my favorite of the season so far we've been getting a lot of information over the last few episodes and even though we saw a part of the killer i feel like we're not that much closer knowing to who they are maybe first let's go back to who bunny met for lunch the day before she died it's a person she does not refer to as her friend and i don't think it's nina because at this point she still thought nina to be a good person and not out for a power grab and turn her back on her we don't know of any people that live in the building that bunny would have the issue with that she would want to talk to uh, this leads me to believe that this was in fact alice or someone else that we have not uh, met yet if it was Alice, she indeed is the person that wants the painting. I also think that it's likely that she is a descendant of Rose Cooper or Charles's father. And again, let's get back to these feet for a minute, along with these gray pants. As I said, they look like work boots and I'm thinking dicky pants. They are a casual uniform for blue collar workers. I noticed that this is the same color as Jose Torres's uniform. I wasn't able to find out how big his feet are, but this could in fact be his, though I think these feet are small and likely belong to a woman. Please let me know what you guys think. Do you think they're women's shoes, women's feet? I think so, but tell me, tell me what you think. And this whole thing about Nina, I'm not going to even entertain the idea that a woman who was pregnant and looks about looks like she's about to pop is a person who murdered Bunny and went around manhandling her. I think Bunny could probably take her out in her current condition. Uh, the shadow does look like they're wearing glasses, but it is very hard to tell. They're definitely wearing something like a beanie to hide their hair because this person looks like they're bald. I think Jose Torres is still the only person I can think of that would have these type of gloves inside of the building just off of hand, but it's possible that someone else did. I believe in general, Bunny came around to the podcasters. Though they were a pain in her butt, they loved the Arconia and they saved it. And in her time of need, she went to Mabel's room, the last place she saw them trying to get some help. But as we know, the trio had already moved their celebrations to the roof. I do still believe that she used the hidden passageway to get there. That still doesn't explain the knitting needle in her chest. We're going to have to see what we get from the next episode. But as for right now, I'm baking on the killer being a woman based on that shoe size. I'm saying the possibilities are Ursula or Alice and a small possibility of Jose if he has small feet. I will be giving away up to $50 worth of items from the Only Murders Hulu shop. They have a wide array of items from t-shirts and hoodies, beanies, stickers, and mugs. To be entered, all you need to do is be a subscriber, like, and comment on this video. The same with any video on Only Murders in the Building from this point on. And at the end of the season, I will have a program choose a person at random to win. And as it is truly random, the more the videos you interact with, the bigger your chances are. And it's just a little thank you from me to you for hanging out at the channel. 
those are all the details I was able to find. Did I miss anything? I know I was trying to get this one out a little bit faster, but I had to take a nap before I started editing and life got away from me. I'm trying to get them out as fast as possible. Please give me all your comments and ideas and I'll be sure to interact with you down below. Thank you again for being here. My name is Dallas and I will see you on the rooftop.